Hey all, Baruch Levy B here from The Defiant Spirit. Thanks for tuning in. If you've been joining me over these past few videos, you've heard a constant theme, and that theme is written on the sign behind me, The Defiant Spirit. I didn't make this up as the name of my counseling and coaching practice. This comes from the work of Dr. Viktor Frankl, my mentor, my teacher, my inspiration in life. If you haven't read his works, read them. Now more than ever, Man's Search for Meaning is one of his 40 books. Um, named by the Library of Congress as one of the top 10 most important books of the 20th century for a reason. Because this man saw the horrors of the Holocaust and not only survived, but he thrived afterwards. Going on, as I always say, to love more fully and live more fiercely, not in spite of what he saw and lost. The death of his wife and his unborn child and his parents and his brother and his family and his friends. And living through four years in the horrors of the concentration camp, not in spite of that, but because of that, doubling down on life and love and light and going out into the world to transform tragedy into triumph. His words, transforming tragedy into triumph is at the heart of his work, logotherapy. I'm a logotherapist. Meaning, purpose, resilience, centered living. It ain't about therapy. You don't lie on a couch. Even if you don't go to a logo therapist, we're all in search of logo therapy. Logos means meaning, purpose, resilience. Therapy means healing. Somebody said to me the other day, I don't need therapy. We all need therapy. You just don't have to go to a therapist, but we all need healing, therapia. And, and, um, and, and psychotherapy is psycho, psyche, soul. That's what it means healing our soul. Well, as Frankel taught, you don't heal your soul. Your soul, soul is always healed. It's always whole. It's that piece of you that is defiant. My last video. In this video, I want to talk about accessing that to live your power of def defiant power of human spirit in the face of life's teas, transitions, tests, trials, traumas, tragedies, particularly me as an Israeli and as an American and as a Jew and as a rabbi and as a teacher in light of what happened in Israel. Because those atrocities, those evils, when they arise, they make us feel like we can't go on. I know so many of my friends who are Israeli and, and Jewish or, or open-hearted, decent human beings who are witnessing it and watching it saying, what do we do now? I can't go forward. I can't go on. It's our duty to go forward. We have to go on, not in spite of the losses, because of those losses, because of the atrocities, because of the tragedies. That's not fair. Tragedy is um, what happens with a hurricane. An atrocity is what happens when it's man-made and it didn't need to be this way. These weren't tragedies. Tra tragedies are unavoidable. This is an atrocity that was and is avoidable, but that takes us into what we must do now. To avoid this, we must do our part. What people say to me all week long, B, what's my part? What can I do? I'm not Jewish or I'm not Israeli or I'm not there. Here's what we can do. One of the reasons why I love my other homeland, Israel, the Jewish homeland, I love my homeland, birthplace, and where I live, America. Both of them are central to my identity, my life. One of the things I draw from the teaching of the Jewish homeland. After 2,000 years, it was reestablished. 1948, Jews had always been living there. This isn't colonialism. This isn't a coming back of the white man. These were black and brown and white Jews living there and continuing to live there. Another conversation for another time. But one of the things that I love about the Jewish homeland, after 2,000 years of holding the hope of Israel, we returned. It's why the national anthem of Israel is called Hatikva, the hope. We had no reason to hope, right? If you read Jewish history, there's no good reason why we should be here. After thousands of years, the single most persecuted people in human history. I don't want to get into the persecution Olympics. Many good people, many good peoples have been persecuted and there's been genocide of all kinds, but there is no other people in the history of humanity that have been called for genocide consistently, constantly, and to this day. You show me one other country on earth that is being called for the extermination. Where? Which one? Which one? Pakistan, the, the other country that was formed in 1948? Nobody's calling for the extermination of Pakistan. Nobody's questioning the existence of Pakistan. 
only Israel. And yet, in spite of that, against or maybe because of that, for thousands of years we've had hope, and now we have hope again. We have hope. Israelis are back at it, living their lives, not completely, but living their lives again. Listen to the messages coming out of Israel. These are not messages of desperation. They're messages of inspiration. This is why Israel exists. This is why the Jewish homeland exists. This is why it will continue to exist because of this mission and message transforming tragedy into triumph as Viktor Frankl did with his life after the Holocaust and so many other survivors. Do you know why they're called Holocaust survivors and not Holocaust victims? As Dr. Edith Eager, another amazing logotherapist and inspiration, read her books, The, the Gift and the Choice, Edith Eager, E-G-E-R, says the difference between a victim and a survivor is a victim says, why me? And a Holocaust victim had every right to say that. Um, the victims coming out of, the, of southern Israel have every right to say, why me? People around the world, whoever you are, wherever you are suffering, you have every right to, if you've been victimized, and we're all victimized at times, to say, why me? And it's a necessary starting point. As I mentioned in a previous video, the first seven days after we've been victimized by the death of a loved one, traditionally, we sit and shiva seven days and we say, why me? And we lick our wounds and we begin the healing process. But then at the end of the seventh day, we stand up and we walk around the block and we say what Dr. Edith Eager taught us, not why me, but now what? Victims say, why me? Survivors say, why, now what? It doesn't mean if you were victimized that you don't have a right to be a victim. You have every right and you need to and we should never victimize the victims even more. It's why it's so atrocious what's going on right now around the world. People justifying and qualifying and contextualizing what happened to the victims in Israel. Um, there's no explaining it away. But those individuals are not sitting in it, taking up residence there, as Dr. Edith Eager calls it, the victimhood. It is not about taking up residence there. It is about saying from why me to now what and choosing to move out of that to figuring out what I can do to defy the darkness, to transform tragedy into triumph. And there's always something to be done. So it is incumbent upon us, listening to this video, to figure out what can I do to contribute to transforming tragedy into triumph. My youngest son, Aviv, has been looking for his way. And one of the things he's been doing is creating Instagram posts on transforming tragedy into triumph. He was so moved by listening to a story of a 12-year-old boy, his contemporary, um, is, Aviv is Israeli, and he was listening to a boy who was dragged off by Hamas, disappeared into the depths of Gaza, probably never to be heard of again. And it struck Aviv so deeply that he said, I want to do something. I'm going to send out Instagram posts that are positive and uplifting and on the slight chance that maybe this boy will see it. Maybe somehow he'll be in front of a phone and maybe it'll just give him a spark to go on. I'm describing what he meant, but that's basically what he said to me, Abba, I want to do that. And I said, then that's your way. My, my son and daughter at the um, CU Boulder have been organizing pro-Israel peace rallies, and they've been standing outside of anti-Israel rallies, which are really pro-Hamas rallies, which are really turning quite quickly into not death to Israel, but death to Jews. And they're singing songs of peace and they're spreading messages of love. And this is their way. Ariella, my wife, has been um, organizing prayer vigils and bringing together people online. So if you're interested in that, this is Ariella's way. My daughter Shoshana has um, been organizing gatherings at her and participating at gatherings at her high school. There's no one way to deal with the darkness. There's your way. And it starts with getting back to our defined power of spirit. It then continues by asking, 
how can I move from why me, which is totally acceptable, to now what, which is absolutely necessary to go from victim to survivor. And we're all survivors of these atrocities, good and decent people. From why me to now what? There's a thousand ways you can contribute to transforming that tragedy into triumph. But in your own life, what are you going through? Or what is a friend going through or a colleague or a neighbor transforming their tragedy into triumph? This is the message of Israel and the Israelis and the Jewish people for all of us. Judaism was put here to be a light unto nations. And one of the ways that we have always seen ourselves doing that is by using our example for other people to transform their tragedies or for all of us to transform your tragedies into triumph. It's why the Dalai Lama approached um, Jewish leaders 20 years ago, asking them to get together and convene and talk to the Dalai Lama about how to keep his people um, alive and well and, and moving forward when they were exiled from their homeland, Tibet. And this was one of the messages um, that they gave him, one of the takeaways was to transform darkness into light. As an aside, it's why every Jewish holy day starts in the evening. So the Sabbath, Shabbat, starts on a Friday night. Why? Because it symbolizes our mission and message for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters who aren't Jewish to take darkness and defy the darkness, to do the supernatural. It's impossible. It's, it's, it's an impossibility, and yet that's what we strive towards, to make the impossible possible, to transform darkness into light. There's a great um, uh, Kabbalistic teaching that says, a little bit, uh, how's it go? A little bit of light dispels a lot of darkness, right? It doesn't get rid of the darkness, but it dispels a little bit. And if you're dispelling a little, and you're dispelling a little, and you're dispelling a little, pretty soon we can see, and pretty soon more people can find their sparks Right? This is why uh, my first, my second book was called Spark Seekers. Going into the darkness, this is a mystical Kabbalistic teaching. Our, our job is to go into the darkness and discover those sparks of light. And it's not easy. The Kabbalists call them shards of light. Because when you take hold of your particular light within the darkness, it isn't easy. It's not easy for Aviv to make those Instagram posts. Every time he's doing it, he's connecting to that 12-year-old boy that could have been him that is suffering in harm's way, and he's dredging up all kinds of pain. He's a sensitive little being, but that's his way of transforming tragedy. What's your way? Is it easy? No, it's not easy. It's not meant to be easy. It's the work that we're here to do, but you want to do something? then find your sparks, your shards of light in the darkness and go into them and discover them. Your meaning, translating that meaning into a purpose and that purpose into a pathway of light for yourself and for those around you. This is not esoteric. This doesn't have to be change the world. It just has to be change your world and not even your the world around you, but the world within you. It's time to stand up from the darkness to go out into the world and to discover our shards of light, to take hold of that light and to share it with the world, to love more fully and live more fiercely, not in spite of what happened um, in the atrocities in Israel or not in spite of the atrocities that Hamas is perpetuating upon its people in the Gaza Strip or not in spite of the suffering on the streets of your particular city where people are homeless and struggling or having lost a loved one or whatever your darkness because of it. That's the mission of all of us. And so as we continue to move through our lives and through this very dark and difficult time, just remember what Admiral William Crow said in times like these. There have always been times like these, and there will always be times like these, but there have also and always been people like you committed to becoming spark seekers, to going into the darkness and discovering and sharing your shards of light. May all of us continue to find our way through a darkened world to do our part to transform tragedy into triumph and do the impossible. That's what it means, Hatikva, the hope that we will make the impossible possible through ultimately transforming tragedy into triumph and darkness into light. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more. And until then, transform your tragedy into triumph and your darkness into light.